Monday morning! I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. This video is part of a series where uh, we explore together uh, a couple of new concepts in JavaScript that arrived in ECMAScript 6. You can find all the episodes in a playlist by uh, clicking in the upper right corner or in the episode description. Today we are going to explore the difference between var, let, and const. In ECMAScript 5, we only had one way of declaring variables, var. But with ECMAScript 6, we now have three. Let's remind ourselves first how var works. So let's say that you have a for loop. This is the f normally the first case where you as a new JavaScript programmer run into this little weirdness. Uh, if this is less than 10, I plus plus, do, 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 and we Let's run that. Uh, right, so it counts up. Now, in other programming languages, uh, like this would be its own little scope, right? Uh, I would only be accessible here. However, in JavaScript, uh, we can actually console log this out here as well. So I'm going to add uh, after loop. I'm gonna run it. You see that it's 10 after the loop. This is super unintuitive uh, when you're coming from another programming language because you expect to have i to be scoped to just this context here. You don't expect it to survive outside of that loop. And the reason for that is that there is only one type of variable scope in uh, ECMAScript 5, and that is a function scope. To illustrate this, I'm going to wrap all of this in a function for you. Bum, bum, bum. There, we're going to call the function counter, and we're going to call the function immediately. Run that. Cool, still works. Now, let's try moving this after loop log outside. And run it. Boom! Now we get an error, i is not defined. And that is because the variable scope for var is just the function. So uh, i here, it's going to be only available inside counter here. And it is because of this that you often see JavaScript code doing things like this. You see here that I'm calling, uh, calling counter right after, but you'll often see JavaScript code that looks like this. And this is a function that is declared and then it is immediately called. This is called an immediately invoked function expression, or iffy. And people do this to keep the variables that are inside the ifies to uh, pollute the rest of the code. So it creates a little cohesive block, a safe haven of sorts. I mentioned before that JavaScript variables are hoisted. What does that mean? Well, it means that they are hoisted to the top of their function. So what we're looking at here is not exactly what the uh, what will be run. In fact, what the JavaScript uh, compiler will do in our interpreter, it's going to go through the code, it's going to find variable declarations, and it's going to take them, and it's going to push them up to the, the top of the code, uh, or the top of the function. Uh, that it's in. So it's going to do this. I'm going to delete that. So it doesn't matter if there's uh, many, many lines of code here. It's going to like always pull the variable declarations up to the top. There's also a horrible aspect of this, and that is if you forget the variable declaration and only uh, like declare it immediately like this, then it's going to be available here. And this is because what has happened is that the JavaScript interpreter has put it up here. If there is no variable declaration inside the function, it's going to keep walking up the function chain all the way up to the global or the window object. Uh, and when it, when it finds it, it's going to... Uh, place the variable there. This is of course horrible because it means that you can just super accidentally uh, declare global variables. Uh, so 
this is actually one of the things that the use uh, strict statement that you are encouraged to always use uh, prevents you from doing. So if I use the use strict statement uh, and uh, try to make this mistake, it's going to throw an error. It's going to say that I is not defined, so I cannot assign to it. JavaScript is a language that uh, tries to be as beginner friendly as possible. And well, in the beginning, it, it did some things that uh, were a bit too helpful. And this is, this is one of them. And that is why uh, the use strict statement was introduced uh, uh, a couple of years back. You should always use use strict. Just to show you a final example here, let's say that I have var i equals nine 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 nine. Uh, and I uh, even just run this, I think. Mm, oh, ah, sorry. Semicolons. Ah, there it works. Let me mention this. Uh, so you saw that there when I ran this code, was that, oh, this number is not a function. Uh, that is because I'm one of those uh, horrible people that don't use semicolons. And this is the one trap where that actually causes an error. It's when when I do this, uh, it tries to uh, interpret it as this. So it's trying to call 9999 as a function with the uh, with this function as as an argument. So if you uh, want to code without semicolons, uh, you need to remember that every time you begin a line with a parentheses, you should begin it with uh, a semicolon. If you are interested in my view of semicolons, uh, you can uh, check out the uh, episode on that in the upper corner or click it in the description down below. Now back to the example. Uh, so you see that here, we it's logging out uh, 999 in the after loop. Uh, and it's logging up this value here. Even though we are using a variable with the same name inside the function here, then that is because this is uh, scoped to this function only. If we remove this var here and run it, that means that we, uh, uh, we get a 10 here. And that is because uh, i is now reassigning this variable here because it will be looking finding here i uh-huh okay we have no i defined so it will be walking up the tree of functions and it will be finding this i and it will be reassigning that one and that is why it's logging it out here like 10 and remember hoisting like even if we do it here don't it's still going to be declared in that space. You see here, 99999, even though it's assigning here. Uh, and that is because it's getting hoisted before it's getting executed. So it's really going to be here when it's executed. Well, let will not have this issue. Bum, 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 let I... And I'm going to run it. Boom, it works as expected. That is because let introduces block scope. This variable here, the one that we let, is only going to be accessible inside of this for loop. This is also going to be true inside of an if statement. If we say if true, very useful if statement, uh, we assign, uh, we say let i equals eight, 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 eight. And after everything, and I'm gonna run that. You'll see that it's still 99999. If I had just said this, for instance, it would uh, be 88888. Also, I think if I said var i, it would still be 88888. Because it, in JavaScript, this, it's allowed to use var multiple times, and I think it will just simply translate it to this. Yeah, it will because because of the hoisting. So if I it's perhaps easier if I say I declared this down here for some reason. Uh, 
this would still like it would hoist these two variable declarations these two uh it would just go no this is not valid i will just do this and i will remove these so this is unnecessary don't run so the assignment here i is overwriting whatever i was above any assignment above unless i do let then it will be 999 again because let will only be accessible inside of this scope because let is block scope not function scope like var is a lot of people say that let is the new var and i agree there is simply no reason to use var anymore Perhaps there are some very specific reason, but unless, of course, you can use const, which you almost always can. Before I tell you about const, let me whine about why there's so much, uh, so much stuff here. This is uh, the packaging for my new desk. Uh, this is my old desk. And I bought it because I am. I had these hand paints, like right here, and it's like inflamed i think said the doctor uh it's making it really difficult to work and it's kind of freaking me out to be honest so i'm buying re replacing everything that is even the slightest bit unergonomic it's just crazy how much you're dependent on your primary arm working as a developer if you have any tips on on dealing with arm pain uh when working at a computer for long periods of time please write them down below for the benefits of your fellow programmers and yeah, me. So anyway, const. Const is what I really wanted to talk about in this episode. I really just explained let in order to uh, talk about const because const is just like let except that you cannot change it. Uh, that's not quite correct. Uh, to be specific, you cannot reassign const. Let me delete this and I'm gonna do var. Uh, x equals 1 and uh, I am going to console load x and I'm going to clear this and I'm going to run it and I return 1. Wait a minute! We don't need to use var anymore, we have let. Uh, it will be exactly the same. So let can be reassigned. So you can do x equals 2 and it's going to be 2. However, if I declare this as const, as in constant, it's going to give me an error. Boom! Assignment to constant variable. Not allowed. Note that constant doesn't make things immutable. So let's say that this is an object uh, where we had um, y, uh, da, 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 5. Uh, and I uh, then I can actually do x plus y equals 6 and run it and it would still allow me to change a property of the constant but I'm not allowed to completely reassign it with a new object say y equals or z equals 9 or whatever this will cause an error so it's not complete immutability but it prevents uh, reassignment Go back to the original example. In my opinion, you should always use const if you do not absolutely need to change the variable. In that case, you should use let, but only if you need to. Now, why is that? Well, ugh, big pen for this one. We want to minimize mutable state. This, my friends, is so important. There is not a lot of things in programming that are universal truths, that are simply good, but this, this is one of them. So I have a dishwasher in the kitchen, and it, I, I guess that it has a bunch of microcontrollers and stuff in it, and sometimes it just stops working. It's not user error, I'm doing exactly as it says in the manual, nothing helps. So you do what every computer person will do whenever they encounter a problem like that. They 
turn it off and on again. And it works! This is... Uh, and this is... The, the user does exactly the same thing before and after the restart. But after the restart, uh, the very same input makes the thing work. Well, it didn't before. And this is, of course, because some state in the machine got fucked up. Some set of inputs, at some timing, in some constellation, made one variable be set before one other, and uh, the dishwasher programmers had not thought about that case, and that just put the machine in an unworkable state, and the only way to make it work again was to just dump all the state and start everything up from the beginning. My dishwasher always reminds me of this truth that it's so important to minimize mutable state because it creates so many problems. Mutable state is so easy to make mistakes with, so it's a very good idea to have as little of it as possible in your project. And putting const everywhere where you don't use variable reassignment, it helps a little bit on that way. It doesn't help a lot, but it helps a little. It's so nice when something isn't mutable. Uh, for instance, here, like we're assigning uh, x to be 1. We know that x will, from this point on, always be 1. Because uh, numbers in JavaScript actually aren't mutable. Uh, we cannot do like x uh, plus plus here and, and change it. It's never going to work. It becomes so hairy in your project if you get an object and that object has a bunch of properties that are mutable. Uh, you check them and see that, yeah, okay, they are this value. Uh, but as you progress down the code or throw that uh, object around after things have happened, the object might have changed. Like, that is horrible. That makes it so hard to work with. To a large degree, JavaScript in the browser saves you from this because it is single threaded, single process. So at least things can change completely mid-execution, like they can in uh, C Sharp or Java. But it can still happen in many cases where the world just changes on your feet. But this is a principle that is so useful in general, not just in JavaScript. In the future, we're going to have more and more cores. So it's going to be very important that we learn to programming in a way that is adapted to the fact that there are going to be lots of processes running through our code at the same time. And once we have that, dealing with mutable state everywhere, that just becomes completely unrealistic to deal with. Minimize mutable state, that's very important. So whenever you use let, just ask yourself, am I really changing this variable and do I really need to change it? If not, use const, because that communicates to uh, the future developer, the next developer uh, in line, that this variable, this will never change. So let's say that there's a big, big piece of software and they see a const at the top of it uh, and they are debugging something related to it, they can know that, okay, cool, this will never change. Or, well, not be reassigned at least. Uh, and they won't have to look through the code in the middle to try to figure out if it's ever changed. They already know that. So they can move on to other things. It's very nice. It's a bit, it's commuting, communicating to the future developer or who, who is probably going to be you. So that's good for you too. That is it for today. You have watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT time. If you liked this episode, you might want to check out the other episodes in this series by clicking in the upper corner or in the episode description. And you might also want to consider if this channel is something that you want to subscribe to. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning. <laughs>